In this tutorial, we will be showing you everything from unboxing your phone to programming the control hub. Make sure you have watched our previous video where we explain the programming options available to you. For this tutorial, you will need the following items. One FTC legal phone, one rev control hub, a 12 volt battery, a battery charger, a switch, a Tamiya to XT30 adapter, an XT30 male to female cable, and any other internet connected device, such as a laptop, Chromebook, or tablet. Please note that this tutorial is made for the new control hub. If you instead have an expansion hub, please view our other video on the topic. The link is in the description and on screen right now. The tutorial will follow the following structure. First, we will unbox and charge the phone. Next, we will unbox the battery and battery charger to charge the battery. Next, we will power the control hub with the battery and add a switch to turn it on and off. Next, we will set up the phone for the first time. Then, we will connect the phone to the control hub. And finally, we will connect our extra device to the control hub so we can program it. With that out of the way, let's begin. Start by unboxing your phone. You might have a different phone than me, but the procedure will be very similar. Start by prying open the back of your phone. This is to be done gently. Start by picking at a corner. Once the corner has been dislocated, use your fingernail to slide across the edge of the phone, prying up where required. This can be frustrating and take a long time, especially if it is your first time opening the phone. But remain patient and careful. It will eventually open. Once the back has been opened, ensure that there is no SIM card inserted in the SIM card slot. If your phone came with a SIM card, remove it. Next, insert your battery into the phone. It can only go in one way and in one orientation. Ensure that the golden metal pins line up on the battery and phone. Then, push it in and then push down. Finally, reclose the back of the phone by aligning the back of the phone case and then press firmly until there is no gap on any edge between the phone and the lid. Once that is complete, plug in the micro USB side of the USB adapter into the phone and plug the USB A side into a charging brick. Then, plug in the charging brick into the wall. Wait until the phone reaches 100% charge. Next, get that out of the way and bring in your battery and battery charger. First, assemble the battery charger. There are two plugs, a European plug and a North American plug. Use the one that fits your outlets. Once you choose the correct one, plug that into the battery charger and the other end into the wall. Next, plug the battery charger's Anderson power pole end into the battery. Your battery should now be charging. If your battery has a toggle switch on it, where one side is a lower voltage and on the other a higher voltage, toggle it to the lower voltage. This will make the battery charge slower. However, it will increase the life of your battery. It is recommended that during the competition, you use the fast charging mode, but during practice, you use the slow charging mode. During normal charging, the battery charger LED will be red. When the battery is done charging, it will switch to green. Once the battery has fully charged, we can begin to wire the control hub. The wiring diagram looks like this. Begin by taking out your Tamiya to XT30 adapter. Connect the Tamiya end to the battery. Connect the XT30 side to the female end of the switch. Next, connect the male end of the switch to the female end of the XT30 extension cable. Finally, connect the male end of the XT30 extension cable to the female port on the control hub. Now power the switch on. You should see a blue LED turn on the control hub. Eventually, the LED will turn green. This means that the control hub is booted up and turned on its Wi-Fi access point. Now it is time to set up the Android phone. Power up the phone by holding down the power key until the screen turns on. Click Get Started. Then connect to a Wi-Fi network. Log in with your team's Google account. Agree to all the terms and conditions. Skip the authentication. Skip payment methods. Essentially, keep clicking Agree or Next till your phone starts. Once there, launch the Google Play Store. Search for FTC Driver Station. Click it and install the app. Once done installing, launch the app. Accept all permission requests. Next, power up the Rev Control Hub. 
Wait until the LED turns green. Launch the FTC Driver Station app. Click on the three dots, then click Settings. Then click Pairing Method and change it to Control Hub. Next, click Pair with Robot Controller. Then click the Wi-Fi Setting button. Then connect to a Wi-Fi network with the name that starts with FTC or FIRST. The password to the network is password in all lowercase. Go back to the Driver Station app. Exit and re-enter. You should be greeted with a heartbeat and voltage reading. Click the three dots, then click Configure Robot. Click New, Expansion Hub 1, and once again, click Expansion Hub 1. Then click Motors. We will set up our first motor according to the diagram on the right. We can see that it is connected to port 0. This will be the left motor. From the drop-down menu, you should have selected the motor that you have. We have Tetrix motors, so we will select that. We will do the same for the second motor. This motor is connected to port 1 and is the right motor. Next, we need to configure our two servos. Our first is on port 0. There are different types of servos you can use. We are simply using the standard servo, so select that from the drop-down menu. This is the first servo on the arm, so we call it front servo. Do the same for port 2, but change the name to back servo. Finally, we can connect a simple digital touch sensor. The sensor connects to the digital pins. Each digital input pin actually supports two inputs through the use of a Y cable. However, we are not using a Y cable, so it will default to a higher value. In the case of physical port 1, that means digital port 1. Configure the sensor as bump on digital port 1. Click done and then done again. Finally click save. Name your configuration. I will name this one tutorial. Click OK once you are done naming. Then click activate beside the name. Finally, hit the back arrow. Now click program and manage. Now go on another device and connect to the same Wi-Fi network your phone connected to. The password is still password. Next, navigate to the web address shown. Everyone's web address will be different depending on your service provider and the IPv4 address assigned to your device. If you are connected to the Wi-Fi network and have navigated to the exact same address, you should see the robot controller dashboard appear. From here, you can program your robot in blocks or on Bot Java and manage settings of the control hub. The first setting you need to change is the password. Click the Manage tab. Then type your own unique password, both in the new password and confirm password boxes before clicking change password. You can choose to show a password if you want to ensure that you have the correct password. After this happens, you will be forced to reconnect to the Wi-Fi network from both your external device and your driver station phone. That is all for this tutorial. Hopefully, you successfully paired your phone and control hub, as well as your programming device to your control hub. In the next tutorial, we will look at programming your first op mode in both blocks and on bot Java.